In November of 2023, the Swell Pod took a 10 day journey across five states, traveling 3,580 miles with one challenge in mind. And that challenge was to interview 100 pleasantly rebellious humans to uncover deep truths about what it takes to create something that has never existed before, challenge the status quo, maybe even change the world. This is the Kiln Road Trip created and produced by The Swell Pod. In partnership with Kiln, Motera Camper Vans, and sponsored by Taurus. I'm Spencer McEwen. And I'm Josh Taylor. And together we're the co-hosts of The Swell Pod and your guides on the Kiln Road Trip. Follow along on the journey. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast. Follow The Swell Pod on social media and subscribe to your YouTube channel at, you guessed it, The Swell Pod. This is interview 34 of the Kiln Road Trip, and today we're at Kiln Provo talking with Nelson Pace. Nelson is an epidemiologist and real-world data scientist who loves working to improve the health of others. Nelson currently works at AbbVie, leading studies designed to test whether a therapy works and ensure its safety. His area of expertise is to understand the causality of a given exposure or treatment and its potential effect on a health outcome. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. We hope you enjoy. Well, welcome to the Swell Pod, uh, part of the uh, Kiln Road Trip this week. How are you? I'm doing well. Glad to be here. Thank you. Would you introduce yourself and what you do? Yes. So my name is Nelson Pace. I'm a cancer researcher, so I'm an epidemiologist by training. Um, I do a lot of statistics and public health work, um, but really these uh, past seven years or so of my career have focused on developing cancer therapies, and so I work mostly with you know large in within large companies large teams um to take a drug from inception all the way to market and and being able to provide that to patients wow that's pretty important work could you give us an example yeah. of a product yeah so um like i worked on a therapy called um mosinatuzumab it's it treats lymphoma and that's the therapy I worked on um, at a prior employer. Yeah. And this, the impact of those types of things, what does that, I mean, I know we grew up in an era where cancer was, obviously it's you know, incredibly um, detrimental to our health. Anyway, that sounds really silly what I just said. <laughs> but, <laughs> but there was a low um, survival rate, et cetera, et cetera. What does that mean, those types of products that you've been working on to, to, a, to a patient? Yeah, I, I, I think what's, you know, there's, there's both challenge and opportunity and a lot that has been done yeah. um, e even within the past 10 years or so. But if, if you look back, you know, in the 1980s, um, pediatric cancer is the, the great example where you had um, basically 20% of, of kids surviving and now you have 80%. And so it's kind of an inverse yeah. of, of what it was. Um, yeah. And you know, most cancer does occur within older populations, um, but thankfully there's been massive improvements in that area too, depending upon the therapy and, right. and the, the indication of the cancer itself. Right. So those, those, those things that you've been working on are, are about just extending those and improving? Uh, somewhat improving. I mean, here and there you'll have very novel therapies that will just kind of train change the face of yeah. how certain cancers are treated. And that's, we've seen that in, in forms of lymphoma and leukemia. We've seen it in breast cancer, um, in lung cancer. And then, and then there are a lot of therapies that also just incrementally better. Say you go from 80% surviving to 85% with the newest therapy, something like that. So. All right. Got you. Well, we'll let's dive into some of that area, but I just wanted to go back to like, why, why, what, what, what was your growing up? What, how, how did you find this area and want to address this area? Yeah, it's been an interesting path. Very few people do kind of my niche area uh, of, of research. And I, um, I, I think for me, going back to my undergrad, I, I knew I, I loved math. I loved the power that comes with understanding um, math and statistics. But I also really appreciated a knowledge and and understanding of life sciences. And so that kind of brought me into biostatistics as a field. Mm -hmm. And then from there in grad school, went to get a master's and a PhD in, in epidemiology. And then um, from there, came over to biotech and pharmaceutical. 
So, yeah. wow. And family, any family in that area, or is, is you completely changed changed it up? Yeah, interestingly, no. Most of my family and extended family, um, when they've gone to you know further levels of education, have have been more um, professional degrees, yeah. like uh, yeah. lawyers or doctors or uh, MBAs and things like yeah. that. Very good. Can you just tell us before um, we carry on, like what what's the what's the organization's name? Um, yeah, anything else you want to for tell sure. us about that? Yeah, so I work for a company called Abvi. They're based out of Chicago area. Um, they're a large pharma and, and biotech company, and I, I work within their their cancer er, um, the cancer part of the company. Uh, there's more than 50,000 people in the company. So it's very large. Mm-hmm. Uh, a number of us are remote, but there's, you know, thousands of people on site in Chicago, um, especially for manufacturing or lab-based research and things like that. So you, you, you work out of Kiln? So I, I work out of Kiln most of the time. I'm, I'm between here, my home office, or I'm traveling for, for work, yeah. you know, going to the st- sites where mm. the study may be running or also in Chicago headquarters there. So. Cool. And uh, can you talk about what you're working on right now? Uh, yeah, to some degree. Yeah. Um, Is it, yeah. Yeah. So what excites you about, I guess, the work that you're doing right now, if you can talk about that? Yeah, I, I think it, I, I mentioned a, a therapy I was working on it. I was at another uh, biotech company before. Um, but just being able to to see like, oh, this is this is going to change how people are treated in this yeah. role. Uh, you know, sometimes it's it's incremental improvements, but so sometimes it's a complete change in um, you know, the opportunity for treatment. So to give an example of that, I, I was working on a therapy that was specifically for very elderly patients. So say, say you get a form of cancer, but the standard of care right now that it a physician would typically give you an oncologist would give you is potentially too toxic mm. for somebody 80 plus. Mm. Um, and a lot of times they will just go untreated and just you know, let it ride. Yeah. They'll have palliative care, basically trying to treat their symptoms more so, but not the cancer. Yeah. Um, but giving those people an opportunity to really have a treatment that's that their body can still handle. Mm. Um, and so bringing that from, the idea to, you know, I, I don't work kind of in the lab sciences, developing the mechanism of action of how the drug works. Um, but the later part where we get to actually in human studies and so seeing that, does it, does it work? And if it works, is it also safe for those patients? And so that, that's very exciting to me, just being able to reach people that have unmet needs Mm -hmm. in their health feel a lot of uh i mean it's got to feel nice i mean almost like every day you're working right because it seems like everything that you're working on it like for something like cancer truly truly makes a difference every single day right like yeah yeah i know i mean it, it's it's great in that way and, and to be honest sometimes you lose focus yeah. of the big picture because it's just so long from the period of the the idea of, of what you're going to treat to where it gets to me like say five years down the road yeah. it's being developed and then I'm, I'm looking at it once it gets in humans. And then we have with cancer, cancer takes a, you know, people can survive for a number of years. And so you have these very long studies. Right. And so you may have a five more years before it gets to patients. Yeah. And so maintaining that focus is important. Yeah, certainly. it's a very long, that's a very long timeline. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. It's interesting. I'm wondering, so help me better understand, I guess, during that period where you know, you're running the tests on various different patients, let's say, what is, so help me understand kind of what you're looking at and, 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 and kind of what, what you're, what you're looking, yeah, just what you're looking at. Yeah. So maybe I'll give an example of like a study I'm running right now. A lot of our, our work in the cancer therapies is often occurring, you know, outside the U S and, and frequently we'll partner with other pharmaceutical companies Mm -hmm. as well. And, and so say, say our, our remit is, is in Europe. And so I have to figure out how can we have data from patients, you know, and we need to present this to their version of the FDA, which Mm, is EMA. And I need data from at least five different countries. And so working with 
AbbVie affiliates, so kind of my counterparts in those countries, to contact oncology centers, mm. clinics, and have them in enroll in these studies and have their patients uh, participating. And so there's there's a lot of, in a way, almost program management too. Yeah, okay. Um, my expertise is really in how the study is designed. Yeah. To design it in an appropriate way that it will produce viable it, results or... It, or it'll get at what the question you want to answer. Yeah, yeah. It's designed to that question. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of logistical aspects. And so I'll work with, you know, I'll, I'll have a, a study manager that kind of just handles logistics and operations, and I'll do the science component. Yeah, so. that's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a challenge, isn't it? To And you say it's just, you need, at that point, you need to have the data to, to to uh, identify the right I'm gonna say humans uh, people mm -hmm. to to test on do you also just need data generally speaking because i uh, as far as i can see that there's a big um big issue in the industry of not sharing data very mm -hmm. freely across organizations uh people can be protective organizations of their their data do, do what type of data do you need and then does that any of that resonate with what some of the challenges you face yeah certainly so th there, there's a few different avenues where we can get data and there's two different types you could probably think of it as primary data where you're initially collecting the data for the first time mm. and it's for that purpose of the study and then there's secondary data which is often um medical claims like the billing the the the, the codes for the diagnoses the electronic health records that are being generated mm. even without a study in place before we get into the rest of the episode, we want to thank the partners and sponsors who made the Kiln Road Trip possible. The Kiln Road Trip is brought to you by Kiln. Kiln is a boutique co-working and flex office community with 13 locations in six states across the West, dedicated to providing innovative workspaces that empower your team to thrive. Whether you're a solo visionary or an enterprise level team of up to 100, Kiln transcends being merely a place to work. It's a hub for learning and connecting with like-minded professionals that will make you and your team love where you work. And if you haven't stepped foot inside a Kiln yet, you really need to. On this road trip, we visited every single location and trust us when we say, once you see these beautifully designed spaces, meet the talented team and connect with fellow members, you won't want to work anywhere else. Locations in include Utah, Colorado, Idaho, Oregon, California, and Arizona. And they're growing too with multiple locations set to open in 2024. Yeah, so be sure to check out the Kiln locations nearest you by booking a tour at kiln.com and answer swell in the question, how did you hear about us? Once you complete the tour, you'll be entered into a competition where you could win a one year membership, their club membership at Kiln. Yep, you heard that. That's kiln.com, book a tour, and be sure to mention Swell in the question, how did you hear about us? The Kiln Road Trip is also brought to you by Motera Campervans, a luxury campervan rental company for iconic road trips. Their top of the line vans are available at seven locations located near America's best outdoor adventure destinations. They have consistently earned the highest customer ratings in the industry, making Motera camper vans your gateway to adventure without sacrificing on comfort or service. That's true, and initially we wanted to take this journey in a 1960s VW bus, but thankfully we found Motera instead. With three van options, we took the Pop Top Classic, which sleeps four and is best for those who want to maximize floor space and, and storage. This was critical for us because it needed to sleep the entire crew, we needed space to edit, and we were traveling with large amounts of equipment, luggage, and you know other goodies that we picked up along the way. And this van took us through all 3,580 miles of the trip. Super comfortable and sweet to drive. And actually, Motera offers fully planned itineraries if you'd rather leave the planning to someone else. Visit gomotera.com forward slash swell. That's gomotera.com forward slash swell. This episode is also brought to you by Taurus. Taurus is leading the charge in home energy storage. Taurus makes it easy to achieve energy independence and a greener tomorrow. The Taurus station provides everything you need to generate clean power, efficiently store electricity, and easily manage your energy use. And installing a Taurus station offers plenty of benefits, including save money on your electricity bill, also ensure energy security with backup power during outages, reduce 
carbon emissions with renewables. You can also automate EV charging and HVAC systems with 100% renewables. And enjoy unrivaled system monitoring and support. If you like the sound of those benefits, get a quote to build your Taurus station in less than 30 seconds. Super easy at Taurus.co. That's T-O-R-U-S dot co. Now, let's get back to the episode. And so you can use those things to inform um, often the primary data collection yeah. that you're going through. Um, but yeah, there, there is certainly can be issues with sharing data, but it's also a... Uh, even before that, the level of patient consent. So the patient may consent to being part of a, a trial or a study, yeah. um, but maybe they didn't consent for their data to be shared beyond that. And so even right. while a company like AbbVie may, be in, may have the data for patients, they may not be able to share it or utilize yeah. it outside of certain bounds that are specified. Yeah, got you. Because we could have asked about challenges, but I think you've just highlighted yeah. a few of the challenges. Where do we go from here? I think it's interesting to just, I guess, you know, I'd be, I'd be interested in your thoughts on this question. So th this is the question that we ask to everybody that comes on the podcast. And I think, you know, a big theme of this podcast is, is you know, entrepreneurship, building something that's never existed before. And there's very, you know, from the guests that we've spoken to, there's various different timelines, you know, so, you know, people in like very quick building like just you know rocket ship startups to uh we had um a couple uh, two people on that were talking about um male infertility um mm -hmm. a, a couple episodes ago yeah. and salt lake yeah and salt lake and and their timeline was a little bit longer they had clinical trials and various things like that and and this seems like by far the longest yeah. timeline and mm. i guess i'm just wondering um your thoughts on what does it take to take an idea and create something that's never existed before, create a movement, create, you know, challenge the status quo even. I'm, I'm wondering, uh, what's your, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think there's a, it depends on, on you know, your lens. Yeah. Are, are you looking very specifically? Um, because, like, I, I'm creating studies that have never, never been done before yeah, because yeah. It, questions haven't been answered. You can look at it from a study perspective. Yeah, yeah that would be good. So, so from, like, within the world of, of what I'm doing, Say I have a study that needs to run for eight years testing the safety of a drug that was recently approved. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we have to en enlist and, and partner with a number of different organizations, um, usually medical facilities, to answer that question. But more at a, you know, broader scope from like a pharmaceutical or biotech company, getting it from, and, and you, you know, an example of this is recursions in Salt Lake um, yeah. is one of the, we few biotechs kind of within yeah. the state. Um, but you see that they're, they're, you know, slowly moving along through their clinical trials and it just takes an enormous amount of time just to develop the therapy or even your, if you're borrowing or partnering the therapy from another biotech. Right. Um, and so, yeah, the, the, the timeline's very long. Um, it, it could be, you know, especially in cancer where you have to follow people for a long period right. of time. It's not like, it's not like a dermatological yeah. treatment where you, you apply it topically in six weeks, you have your result. Of, yeah. You know, what, yeah. Did it help the rash or not? Um, it's very different following somebody for five years versus six weeks. Yeah. So it's very interesting. Um, what, um, is there anything else you'd, you'd say around uh, advice for our listeners who, I don't know, they could be in this field of biotech, something else, any other advice that you'd want to, I don't know, share yeah. or anything else you want to talk about. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm very, very optimistic about the future. I think there, there's, we, we have treatments in cancer that can cure mm. or remove the disease, um, but they're fairly nuanced and, you know, it, not, not a lot of treatments can do that. And then there are treatments that can stop the disease. Yeah. And more optimistically, what, what can reverse it? Like if you, if you can stop the tumor and kill it in its place, or can you reverse it and actually heal the mm, tissue that right. I would have previously taken over? And so there's just a, so many different opportunities and we're learning within some of the bigger cancer areas like lung or breast cancer, can we target certain forms of this cancer genetically mm. and kind of stop it in its tracks rather than, you know, the, the, the classic setting of 
somebody's getting chemotherapy, you know, outward symptoms, you're, you're seeing the loss of hair, just debilitating yeah, treatment yeah, yeah. versus a very targeted treatment that would only attack cancer cells sort of thing. Interesting. So, yeah, this, this was good. Yeah, thank you for, for being a part of it. And it, it's an area that we clearly don't, well, I don't know anything about uh, other than that we have interviewed people that have touched on some of these subjects. Um, uh, one of my good friends on here, Matthew Levitt um, from Lumiere mm -hmm. and uh, PathNet. And, you know, they're trying to do digital pathology and trying mm -hmm. to change that area. And I, I guess each part, each person that's trying to challenge the status quo and move it forward is actually important to the whole, well, to the patient, basically. You know, yes. Future patients that either can be, you know, helped with what they already have or maybe preventing as you as you just talked about. So thank you for the work you do, making a difference in the world. Um, anything yeah, else? No, let's end it. Thank you very awesome. much. Thank you thank so much. You. Appreciate really it. appreciate it. Great to chat with you. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of The Kiln Road Trip. Be sure to follow along on the rest of the journey. And you can do that in two ways. One, subscribe to the podcast, whether you're listening on Apple, Spotify, or maybe even watching on YouTube. And follow along on all of our social media platforms, whether you're on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or TikTok, at The Swell Pod. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next episode.